Welcome to the studio. Today we're going to do things a little bit differently and we're going to tackle 12 misconceptions in 3D printing. And if there's one thing you know for sure that there are some strong opinions in 3D printing. Now I'm going to get a little help from a friend, but let me warn you, he's a bit awkward, but stick with me. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, so, because if there's one thing that's stronger than ABS, it's 3D printing opinions. Wow. Well, let's start out with the first misconception, and that is that 3D printing is too expensive. And that's absolutely not necessarily true. You can still get into this hobby for just handfuls of dollars, for as little as 60 to to $100 even, for beginner level, like tinkering type machines. Now, I wouldn't recommend that. I would probably go with a good entry level, top quality machine, and those are available for somewhere around the you know $200 mark. And, uh, but, just like any hobby, this hobby can get out of hand, like my awkward friend is about to tell you. You know, um, some people say that 3D printing is really expensive, but that's not, that's not true. You can buy a 3D printer now for less than $200. Did you, did you know that? I have like $10,000 in filament, like in my van outside. If you want to come see it after the show, I'll show it to you. I'm sorry. Anyway, the, another misconception is, is that 3D printing is just for nerds. And no, that's another one that's not true. 3D printing is advanced so far that 3D printers are incredibly easy to use and they're at every level from novice uh, to expert. So, you know, definitely. Um, we might all have a little bit of a nerd in us, but it's definitely not just for nerds. Some people say that 3D printing is just for nerds. I don't think that's true. I mean, I like it. <laughs> uh, I told you, 3D printing is not just for nerds. Anyway, the next misconception is the complete opposite of the one we just talked about. And that is that 3D printing is really cheap. That's another one that we get all the time. And I think it's a hobby that just scales, just like any other hobby. So you can get into it cheap, or you can spend a lot of money. And uh, my friend is about to share with you a little love story. Also, don't get into strangers' vans. I w went on a date with a girl, and I tried to impress her. And after we ate dinner, I took her back to my van. <laughs> and when I opened the door, she saw all my masks and, and my gloves. <laughs> and I told her, that's $7,000 in resin 3D printing stuff. <coughs> she didn't understand. 3D printing is, it's basically a, a financial black hole with RGB lights in it. <coughs> Just saying, if I was tempted, I might have gotten the van. Anyway, the next misconception is, is that 3D printing is easy. Well, some parts are, of course, but we want you to remember that 3D printing is additive manufacturing. So there is quite a lot to it. It's a deep subject. So 3D printing is easy. You just got to level your bed and calibrate your flow and then fix any Z-banding, rebuild your extruder, and then flash your firmware. It's pretty easy. It's like, like talking to a woman. Hi. See, 
Not difficult at all. And that leads us right into our next misconception, which is probably the biggest gatekeeping one that there is. And that is that 3D printing is just too difficult. And that couldn't be further from the truth. User experience has changed dramatically in the last five years in 3D printing with companies like Bamboo coming out and really pushing the limits on making 3D printers approachable uh, by beginners and making them just really simple to use. So anywhere from, like I said, beginners to advanced users can find success with some of these new machines. And I'm talking at ages as, as low as like six, seven and eight years old will have no trouble navigating the interfaces on these printers. Let me interrupt you for just a second and tell you that we are the number one 3D printing channel on Twitch. And we go live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific. And we give away printers and filament and accessories every single time we go live. Seriously, it is a 3D printing show like you've never seen. We'd love to have you there. Come join us. So some people like to say that 3D printing is too hard. It's not. You can click print now from your phone. It's so easy, um, even my mother can do it. Before you get all upset, freak out. Um, she built my first computer for me, and she even welded the hitch on my van. And, and she fixed the lawnmower, too, because I, I couldn't. So if she can do those things, she can print a Benchy. But I think, honestly, the hardest part about 3D printing is explaining why I have a box labeled failures. <laughs> Poor guy. We all have failures. Anyway, another 3D printing misconception is, is that 3D printing is good for the environment. Now, you're going to have to stick around for the rest of the video to hear both sides of this. But ultimately, 3D printing, we're making plastic things. Everything that we 3D print, it doesn't matter where you put it and how you think you're going to use it or how long you're going to keep it, we make garbage. So 3D printing is actually really good for the environment. So um, you save a lot of money and resources by making things yourself. And um, I, I like to print... Uh, full-size Star Wars helmets for my head that I wear in my van alone while I'm making another helmet. <laughs> if you want, I can show them to you. How crazy is that? I like making giant Star Wars helmets too. Hmm. Anyway, another misconception is, is that 3D printing is bad for the environment. And like I said, there's some good and there's some bad here, but 3D printing is micromanufacturing, which means we have the capability to produce locally with these materials and with these machines, which dramatically reduces the impact on the earth when we're not shipping things great distances. And I like to use the example of something like a fly swatter or even a doorstop as an example. That instead of ordering a doorstop or a fly swatter or something like that, or maybe even a spatula for your kitchen from Amazon or from any of these other online retailers where it's manufactured overseas and it's in a container ship and it ends up here and ends on trucks and trains and airplanes to ultimately end up at our homes where you now have a 3D printer where you can just walk up and push a button and get these items locally. Some people say that 3D printing is bad for the environment. No way. I know, right? I don't think so. I think we're actually saving the planet by coating it in a thick plastic shell. Another misconception is, is that 3D prints are weak. And I really think that that's kind of a funny argument because it's just a material that's used in manufacturing. So that would be the same as saying that wood is weak or aluminum is weak or steel is weak. It's just a material. And it really depends on how it's applied. Now, for those of you who might be new to 3D printing, I'm not sure that you're aware of the types of materials that we have. 
So obviously the most common materials that we print with are things like PLA, which is a, like a corn uh, derivative, right? So it's something that's very uh, cheap to manufacture. It's, it's more for like trinkets, toys, crafting, and things like that. But that's not all. We have materials like PETG, which uh, is the same materials that you use uh, for drinking bottles. We also have materials like ABS, which is the same material that like most of your car bumpers are, are made out of, or even the, the shell on your television at home. Now we also have materials like nylon, which you're familiar with. And then we have infused materials like glass infused, carbon fiber infused, even Kevlar infused filaments, right? And there's filaments that range all the way up into polycarbonates and peak and ultim and these filaments that are very, very engineering grade specific. 3D printing has an enormous potential for materials and capability, and it's really how you apply it. A lot of people think that 3D prints are pretty weak. I know, sometimes. You can just blow on them, and they snap in half. But lots of 3D prints are tough, you know? I think some prints will survive the apocalypse and be in the landfill for thousands of years. And since cockroaches will survive, they can live in my PLA benchies. You know, not every 3D print is the same. You know, some people have 3D printed toaster knobs that could stop a bullet. And, and then there's people that print. Why? Why do they print those? Like I printed a doorstop, and it broke. <laughs> what? I don't even know what this is. I'm sorry. So bed adhesion is kind of like the relationships of 3D printing. Yeah, I've had uh, prints pop off um, the build plate in the middle of printing. It's basically the 3D printing version of getting dumped. <laughs> One minute everything's hot and sticking, <laughs> and the next it's cold and your life's in pieces. Well, the next misconception is, is that 3D printing is really just for toys and trinkets. And that couldn't be further from the truth. There is an entire movement in the 3D printing hobby for printing practical prints. And it's not just practical prints, we also have prototypes and again, micro manufacturing. So I know that the toy and the trinket side gets a lot of attention because I think it's flashy, it's fun, it's something that everyone can do. You can jump online, you can download models, throw them on your printer and print fun things for family, for friends, um, things like that. But as far as it being only for toys and trinkets, no, absolutely not. Manufacturing and print farms is a real thing, and they are producing incredible practical functional parts all day, every day. They're action figures. <laughs> action figures. <laughs> I can print whatever I want, Mom. Okay, easy. They're action figures. We got it. All right, the next misconception is, is that 3D printers are only for printing functional parts. And it's the inverse of the one that we just talked about. And there's just a little group of people that think that you should only use 3D printers for printing these prototypes or for functional mechanical things rather than printing toys or decorations. And the truth is, don't worry about it. 3D printers are for whatever you want to use them for. So go for it. Have some fun. Yeah, so you, you can totally print functional things like parts and stuff. Like... I mean, I'm going to print a uh, full-size TIE fighter. It's pretty cool. I'm going to tow it with my van. I'm so sorry for this video. It's almost over. You've all been a wonderful audience. So tonight, I'll leave you with one last joke. What do you call a bunch of Voron people at a party? <laughs> Lost. It's <laughs> <laughs> <This is> good. <laughs> hey.
Hey, if this uh, if this made you smile, or uh, maybe just stare at me uncomfortably, um, you should like and and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And uh, a huge thank you to my YouTube members and uh, my Patreon guys over there. Yes. Um, thanks a lot because I couldn't do this without you. So, um, bye.